Hi, I'm Linda Peterson and welcome to Creative Life TV here in my crazy mixed up and kind of messy art studio. This is where I create. Today's show is all about creating crazy mixed up mixed media art. So we're going to be pulling out all the stops and using paper and fabric and glue and paint. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I have four projects that I think you're going to really, really enjoy. First, I'm going to share with you how to be the coolest mom or grandma on the block when you make your kids their very own cell phone pouch. It's a super cool, super easy, and a no-so project. Then I'm going to show you how to emboss on wood. That's right, we're going to be embossing on wood and creating this grungy embossed wooden frame. Then I'm going to show you how to turn baby wipes into gorgeous vintage flowers. And finally, we're going to dig back into the Creative Life Vault and I'm going to bring back one of my most popular segments, the Sunflower Canvas Wall Art. We have so much to do. You better grab your craft supplies, your glue, your paint, your paint brushes, and come join me in the studio, won't you? I am so excited to have you in my studio today, my rather messy, mixed up, crazy studio. I've just finished working on some of my mixed media projects and yes, I've kept it a little messier than normal because I wanted you to see kind of what, well, kind of an inside look at what my workspace looks like because when I get into creative mode, things fly. And I've got all kinds of things to work with. I've got some watercolors, I have gesso, I have some stamps, stamps I've made, I've got some um, color wash, acrylic paint, things to make textures with. I've even got some old baby wipes. And so what I want to share with you today is some techniques to help you create some great mixed media art because you don't have to have an art degree and there are no rules. You just get to have a lot of fun creative play. And the first project that we're going to do is a no-sew project. I love no-sew projects, especially when they're easy. And we're going to create this really cool phone pouch. This is a super cool, super fun project. Especially if you don't like to sew, we're going to make this into a no-sew project with the Aliens Fabric Tacky Pack. We'll be using the OK to Wash It and uh, the Jewel It from this particular pack. You're going to need some t-shirt material, and I'll talk to you about how we're going to come up with the pattern in just a minute. You'll need some a swatch of extra fabric. My fabric is pretty thin and it frays a lot. You'll want something that will create a texture, so uh, something like this or a muslin would work really well. And then you need several colors of accent printed fabrics. These are cut out into circles and they kind of graduate from larger to smaller. So let's talk a little bit about making the pattern for your phone. And what you'll need to do is measure your phone the width of your phone, double that measurement, and then add an inch. So in this case, I'm going to have my width seven and a half inches. That way when it folds over, it'll make a nice pouch for my phone. Then you're going to measure the length of your phone and add a half an inch. So uh, in this case, mine is six inches. So I have a rectangle that is seven and a half inches wide by six inches long. I also have a strip of fabric here that is an inch wide and it's about, well this one here is about 18 inches long, but you can make this however long you want because this is going to be our uh, little handle or the little strap that we're going to put on our pouch in case you want to wear this around um, your arm. 
So the first thing to do is to finish the upper edge of your sock. And to do that, you're going to run a bead of glue with the OK to wash it along the top of the sock. And I'm working on the wrong side of the fabric. It's hard to tell because it's t-shirt fabric. But if you're using a printed fabric, make sure this is the wrong side of the fabric. And fold that edge down about a quarter of an inch like I have already done. Next, you're going to flip that over to the right side of the fabric. And we're going to run a bead of glue down one end of the fabric here and halfway up to the center. So let me do that right now. And you can see that I'm using a lot of glue. It's real important for this to make sure that you're using a generous amount of glue. That way it, it sticks really well and you don't have to worry about it coming apart later. You can even run that a little past center line if you want. Especially these corners. Make sure there's quite a bit of glue in these corners so that they really grab well. That's going to make a big difference. And then you're going to fold over and match your ends like this. Pat that down. Let that dry. Make sure that it is completely dry I missed that. before you go on to the next step. I have one here that is already dry, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut these corners on an angle just so that when we turn our pouch inside out, we have nice corners. And we're going to attach the strap. So what I'm going to do, make sure your pouch is flat and just under this area where you folded, you're going to make a little tiny nick, just a little hole on each side. It's about a quarter of an inch down from the top, little tiny nick. And you're going to come back in with that strip of of the t-shirt material and stretch it real big. This will fold it in on itself and then you're going to thread from the inside to the outside the end through that hole and give it a little knot about a half an inch from the end. Okay. And just to make it a little bit more decorative I come back in and I kind of fringe these ends off if you want to. Just makes them fluff up a little bit better. And pull it down so that knot meets the end of your pouch right here. And then add just a little bit of the wash it glue. Doesn't take a whole lot this time because what you're doing is you're just kind of searing off or um, finishing off that edge so it doesn't fray out any farther. And go all the way around that little hole. And do this, of course, for the other side also. This also helps. There's that little nick. There we go. And if it comes apart like it just did for me, because that might happen for you, don't worry about that. We'll fix that here. I'm going to add a little bit of my glue there and pull this back down through. And then you can come in and secure that again with a little bit of glue. And what you can do this time is you can actually um, put a little clothespin there, put a little clip there, a little pinch clip there, and wait for that to dry. So now you have created the front part of your pouch. Let's go on to the finishing detail. And so this one is all ready for the final finishing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a strip of fabric. This is just a, a swatch of leftover fabric that I've had. 
And I like this particular fabric because it has it frays a lot. It's really cool. And just glue this fabric down here. I'm going to finish my little flower by gluing the last layer that I have right in the center. So I've glued all of these layers together in the center and now I'm going to glue it to my pouch. And next I'm going to come in with my Julet glue and whoops got a little bit much there. Add my glue there. I love super simple no sew projects. You know, I love using fabric a lot, but sometimes I just don't want to go through the hassle of pulling my sewing machine out and digging out my bobbins and my thread and going through that whole rigmarole. Sometimes I just want to work with fabric and I don't want a complex project. That's why I like this project. So, you know, as I was doing this, I was thinking it'd be really cute if you uh, put maybe a little monogram of their initial or make it a little bit more personal that way. You could also enlarge this pattern and make them a little tote bag. And then I went ahead and finished the other one that I had done here. I just put a little felt uh, button, little felt heart button here, and I glued in some Velcro so that it's so that it sticks. So just some little fun ideas. Oh, and the other thing I did is I clipped these little edges here and I, I frayed them out so they're kind of like fringe. Lots of fun stuff to do and get your kids involved. They'll really enjoy doing this. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to grab our paints, our decoupage medium, any kind of old papers that you have. And if you have a wooden frame, get that out too, because I'm going to show you how to emboss on a very simple wooden frame. For our collage frame, we're going to be working on a very inexpensive wood frame. You can get these for about a dollar at uh, your local craft store. And I have printed out on my inkjet printer so a page that has a lot of old words. I happen to have a book that is uh, over 100 years old that I use whenever I want uh, old writing. So you could use a sheet of sheet music or just whatever you have. Like I said, an inkjet printer works just fine. And you're going to decoupage this down onto the uh, surface of the wood. Make sure that it's completely dry. And you don't have to be real precise. You can see I've just kind of torn the strips of paper. So the next step would be to sand the edges with a sanding block. And this is going to clean up those edges and tear away the excess paper. And now that I have all my edges sanded and the inside sanded, this is really where the fun begins. So we're going to just slap on some color and um, you'll want to choose a color palette, you know, that matches your decor. I'm going to be using this, it's called Peony Pink, and um, it's going to turn kind of an orangey color when I get uh, the next layer put on it. Just kind of slap that on pretty haphazard there. And I've got a little bit of turquoise that I'm going to put on. When you do mixed media art, I always say that it goes through kind of an ugly stage. So you gotta have to work through that. Don't give up on it. I know that this co these couple colors look kind of odd together right now, but when working with mixed media, it's all about layers and layers and collaging and just kind of letting your art be free. Notice here that I have put on the paint rather thin, so it's a little transparent and make sure that you can see some of your words uh, pop up through. You want to make sure that you're going to see whatever image or parts of images that you've decoupaged down onto your wood. So we're going to move on to the next step, which is going in with a color wash. And I'm using a butterscotch color wash and these are, this is a 
a dye that's kind of water activated. You can do it two ways. You can spray it directly onto your project or you can spray it onto your palette. I'm going to spray it onto my palette and then just dip my brush in the water and just kind of um, put it on over the top. And you can already see that it's changing the color of the paint that I put on underneath of it. And that's good. That's what I want. And since we're putting a yellow over some of the blue, you're going to get kind of a sagey green color. And then just like I said with the uh, pink, it's turning kind of a an orangey color, which goes really well with the color palette that I use in my house. This dries pretty quick. And of course, if you get it too thick in uh, some areas, you can wipe it off. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wipe a little bit of it off, kind of distress it a little bit with a paper towel. Just a little bit here and there. Whoops. I tore up a little piece right there, so let me put this back down. If you miss any of the instructions that I'm giving you today, remember that you can go to my website at lindapetersondesigns.com and get all of the instructions for today's project or any project that I featured on my show. Now we're going to move on to the dimensional step. And to add dimension, I'm going to be using this molding paste. And I've put a little bit on my palette right here. You're also going to need a credit card or a room key that you forgot to turn in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plastic stencil here and I'm just going to lay it over the area that I want to add the dimension to and I'm just going to kind of squeegee this on. The cool thing about this is this uh, modeling paste, I'm not adding any color to it right now, but it will pick up some of the dye that is underneath that we put on uh, before and it will kind of turn it a yellowy color which is kind of cool and you'll see that start to develop as the as it dries you're going to do this in all the areas that you want a little bit of dimension it doesn't have to be perfect you can miss some areas and in fact you do want a little bit of texture you kind of want it you don't want it perfect because when we go, come in with the antiquing step, it'll really highlight those imperfections and make it look really, really cool. And so when I remove it, that's what you get. Isn't that cool? The molding paste is completely dry, and just like I said, it's, it's actually lifted up some of that dye color, that yellow dye that I put in there, and it's tinted it a little bit. I've also gone over this with a, another coat of the decoupage medium, and it is completely dry. So now we're going to move on to the antiquing step, and I have a bit of, this is burnt umber, it's just a, a thicker bodied acrylic paint, and we're going to go over the entire surface and paint this on. Pretty liberal but kind of slap it on at the same time. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to put it on thicker over the area that I stenciled and um, gave some dimension to. I know it seems a little odd after we've put all this work into creating our background that we're covering it over with brown paint, but you'll see that it really gives it a cool effect. If you don't want it distressed and antique looking, of course you don't have to do this step. I'm going to speed up the drying process with a little bit of heat here. Because I'm working with a decoupage medium that is water resistant, um, it's going to allow me to come back over with a wet cloth and take away some of the paint that in areas that I don't want it. And that's the reason why I use that layer of decoupage medium between my base layers and this antiquing layer.
Let me grab a baby wipe here. And we can come back and start to rub away some of the brown paint. Got to put a little bit of elbow grease in this for it to work. Keep on removing as much of the antiquing layer that you like, and when you get the look that you like, you're going to finish with another layer of collage podge, add a photo, and sit back and enjoy what you've just made. Well, did you have any idea that creating a texture on wood would be so easy? You don't have to wood burn, you don't have to have any special skills, you just let the modeling paste and the stencil do all the work for you. And you can use this on a lot of other surfaces too. You can use it on paper and canvas. Just play around with it. I think you're going to have fun seeing what you can create with that particular technique. You know, when I was doing this project, and I haven't even finished it yet because I haven't put the, the photo in it, but the word that kept coming to mind was shipwreck. And I know that's such an odd word to, kept, to keep coming in my mind over and over again, shipwreck. But I think it's the texture that the stencil has. It reminds me of the texture or the carving that you might see on an old treasure chest. And you know what, before I knew it, my mind was wondering and I was dreaming about being off on a tropical island and it was lush and beautiful beaches and here comes this old pirate chest and it's washed up on the shore and it's full of beautiful seashells and wonderful things to create with. And I don't know, it's kind of silly, but you know what, it is fun sometimes to just dream. That's where our inspiration comes from. And it's good to do that to de-stress a little bit too. Well, you might not think of these old baby wives that I have here on my table as being much of a treasure, but you can turn them into one. And with this next project, I'm gonna show you how to make some gorgeous fabric flowers with them. I'm going to share with you a couple of techniques that you can incorporate into your mixed media projects. And for this, I'm just going to use uh, the basis of a tag from the office supply store. This is just a, a shipping tag. And I'm going to stamp a random pattern. Now, I have carved my own stamp from a pink eraser. So I've just drawn circles with a pencil and I've cut it out with a craft knife. Nothing fancy, nothing very regular about this at all. You can do any shape that you want. And I have here on my palette a very thin layer of decoupage medium. No paint, no color in the decoupage medium, but I'm going to stamp it on to my stamp and then I'm just going to apply that real random on top of my tag. This is almost going to give a watermark effect. And you'll want to make sure that this is completely dry before you move on to the next step. And when it's dry, the next step is to come in with your color spray and just randomly spray a couple of colors on top and bottom. There. You can come back in with a baby wipe. Mine is a moistened baby wipe and you can daub that off. Where the two colors meet, they'll blend together. You have a really cool background for your tag. You can also let this dry and then later come in with a distress pad and ink those edges up like this one that I have here. And so this is my completed tag or the background of my tag that we're going to set aside and we're going to work on the baby white flower. I just thought these colors were really cool and I kind of discovered this idea when I was cleaning up my workspace after I finished a project and I saw these beautiful colors. Um, these were what was left over when I wiped up my, uh, my palette on my table. And I just knew that I couldn't let these pretty colors go to waste. So what I did is I started tearing them. And you can see they're really nice and fluffy and they just have beautiful edges. Then I bunched them up and I thought, wow, these can make some really cool vintage looking flowers. And they do. So what you're going to do, and you can do this um, any size, any shape that you want, is you're going to tear these into these random round shapes. And you'll want three or four in different sizes. You'll need a large, a couple mediums, maybe a small. Sometimes I put three layers, sometimes I put four layers in there. And let me just show you how easy this tears. You just tear it in a circle. And for your center layer then, what you're going to do is you're going to bunch this up and then hold it at the bottom. 
I have one already threaded on to um, a needle and thread. So you're going to make a little stitch in the bottom and you'll do this again. You'll put one exactly like this right next to it. This gives it an extra little bit of fluff. Let's attack that on. And then sew it to the base layer like I've done on this one and spread it out. You can see that it's nice and fluffy. You can add little seed beads to the center if you want. You can add little buttons. There's so many things that you can do with these. But it makes a nice little peony type of a flower. Now, because all these colors coordinate, we're going to make a very colorful type of tag here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start collaging my tag together. Let me get a little bit of my glue. I'm going to add a piece of burlap for texture. Let's glue this on. And I have saved d several different colors and I just, for the leaves, I've just torn them into kind of a teardrop leaf shape. Watch this on. You're going to continue to glue on all of your elements onto the front of this tag, and really anything goes. I had a little strip of fabric that I added. I added a little button. Whatever you have laying around, use it. Now let's take a close-up look at our finished tag. Pretty cool technique, huh? Who knew you could do that with a, a baby wipe that you would probably throw away, right? They just make such gorgeous, colorful, colorful flowers. And I think that's what I love about mixed media, and especially working with items that you would normally throw away, because it challenges you to create. It challenges your creativity to make something out of nothing. I got this idea oh, about a month or so ago when I was at one of our retreats. Now, my girlfriends and I, we get together a couple times a year and we go, it's just outside of town, there's a little bed and breakfast out there and they treat us like royalty. They scrapbook and a lot of times I just bring all my mixed media art supplies and I make canvases like this one. This one has a lot of the colors, in fact it's, it's the colors that I have right now in these old baby wipes. And so when I'm spraying on the paint or what not, obviously, I mean, you know, paint flies everywhere. And so, you know, here I am, I'm cleaning up my work area and I notice all these gorgeous colors and I just had to put them to use. So what do you have around your house that you could repurpose? into some really cool art. Maybe you have some old fabric scraps. Maybe you do the same thing and you're using an old t-shirt as a rag. Maybe it's beautiful, has some beautiful colors into it. Think outside the box. Now I'm gonna go back into the Creative Life Vault and I'm gonna pull out one of my most popular segments. This is how to create a mixed media canvas. And there are lots and lots of painting techniques, and in particular, one of my favorite ones, and it's painting with bubble wrap. This is a 12 by six inch art ca canvas. Um, you know, something that you would put an oil painting or an acrylic painting on. I have not put any gesso. All I'm using is decoupage medium and newsprint. So I have cut up several pieces of the newspaper um, paragraphs and I'm going to just decoupage them on to my, um, directly onto my canvas. This is laying the base for my canvas here. So once your canvas is completely dry, um, I went around my canvas and I sanded the edges uh, just like this. I've got a little tag left here to show you. And if you'll just sand, sand the edges, then it'll thin the paper out and you can peel it right off. It's nice, neat, and even. 
Over here I have some acrylic paint. I have an eggshell color and a white color. And this right here, even though it looks like white paint, is actually a glaze. Uh, glaze makes your paint translucent. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to apply a wash, a real light white wash over the top of this. Now some areas are going to look really heavy and some areas are going to look like they have hardly any paint on them at all. That's okay because we're just applying um, a really interesting background and everything goes. So just kind of slap that paint on just like that. Have a big wide brush. Now here's a fun way to paint. Um, I have some plastic wrap here and what you'll do is you'll just add a little bit of the paint. This is kind of like a monotone paint. I don't want to put too much because I personally want to see some of that newsprint kind of shine through there. So let's wad this up and then we're just going to go over the top of this and kind of stamp. Just gives a real modeled effect. And you're going to do this over the whole surface then of this canvas. You can also texture with some bubble wrap or anything that you have lying around the house that you think would add an interesting texture. It can be um, the rim, maybe this is kind of large, this is a mason jar, but it could be the uh, rim of a bottle top. Anything that you want that's going to create an interesting and pleasing background. Don't Just don't overdo it. Um, and if you do, you can paint over this white again, put a new uh, coat of uh, newsprint, and you can start all over. So you're not going to make a mistake. But you're going to go over this with, a, with the white and the off-white to create a real interesting background. Now we're going to apply the focal point of our um, mixed media collage, which is a sunflower. And to do that, I collect ephemera books. And you can get these sometimes pretty reasonable at... Um, thrift stores. This one happens to be from 1865, but I love it because it's got a lot of journaling, a lot of writing in it. I also have this sheet here that I got from a music book that's pretty old as well. Now what I've done, you can see that I have already decoupaged the um, sunflower and then I used the music uh, to create my pot. But all I did really was, I, for the center, I just tore out a circle. So I cut the square uh, about the size that I wanted the center of my flower and I'm going to I'm just tearing out a random circle it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm going to cut just with my scissors and I'll have a pattern for this if you want to be a little bit more precise but that really doesn't matter I'm just cutting leaf shapes so some of them are fat and some of them are skinny and you're going to line those all the way up remember to work from the bottom up and you're going to decoupage these on and wait for this to dry. Then we'll go on to, we've got two more techniques left. We're going to go on to the next step and we'll begin to color our flower. This is where the fun really begins because this word's going to start to take shape and come to life and we're adding details and bringing it to life. Um, and this is where your personality is really going to take shape. So now I have three colors, or actually I have two colors of acrylic paint. I have a, a mustardy yellow and um, a warm color of red. We're going to mix those two together and it'll make an orange. And then the white here is the glaze that makes it translucent. So side load your brush. And I'm going to paint really just on the one side of the petal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to just add a little bit of red on the side of my brush and when I mix that in I get a little bit of orange there. When I come in I'm going to add some orange down here. Just really working with the side of my brush. Okay. You're going to work this all the way around until you have your petal colored. And when, you, when we come back after it dries, I'll show you what that looks like and we'll move on to our pot down at the bottom. 
we've accomplished so much so far and all we've really done is we've decoupaged and we've stamped with some unusual materials and painted a little bit so now I've already started on my um, on this pot down here and what I have is some distress ink and I'm just going to rub it over it's easier to do on this pot because um, it's such a large area and that's why you can do this but you're going to rub it over and the cool thing is, is if you've applied a glossy uh, collage, or collage medium or a, a decoupage medium, it kind of makes it a little like it's a resist. And you can come back and you can put a piece of bubble wrap and then lift it off and it kind of lifts away some of the pattern there. I'm going to go ahead and finish out my um, my pot here and then um, I'm going to work on the sunflower just a little bit more then we're going to go on to our final step all right before we wrap up this segment I want to share with you one last technique and that is coming in and using your charcoal pencil um, this is a pretty soft pencil and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline some of my leaves here and blend with my finger this really sets it off it breaks up the petals it kind of lifts the sunflower off of the page and gives it a lot of extra detail I'll also go around with a permanent marker and give it a little bit more fine detail as well so I'm going to outline everything all of my elements with my charcoal pencil I'm also going to add additional layers of texture on top. So I have things like a rubber, or not rubber stamps, I have foam stamps, I have rubber stamps. Of course, you saw the technique with the bubble wrap. So look for things around the house that um, would give you an interesting texture. And they could be something as simple as the top off of your paint and dip it in paint and add some little circles. Lots and lots of fun things. I'm also my very last step will be to just decoupage a phrase on here and you can either print one out uh, from your computer or you can tear one out of a magazine so now I'd like to show you what my finished sunflower project looks like It's so much fun to create texture and paint without a paintbrush. What do you have laying around your house that you could create some amazing texture with? How about a credit card? It paints some great lines or maybe some drawer liner or maybe you have an old eraser that you could carve out and make an interesting stamp. Lots and lots of things to get your creative juices flowing and make some great mixed media art. That's going to do it for the show. I have really enjoyed sharing these projects and these techniques with you. I hope that I've inspired you to make a phone pouch for your girls. You'll be the coolest mom on the block. I hope you'll get some of that modeling paste and start texturizing everything, whether it's canvas or the wooden frame that we did today. Think of things that you can repurpose. Don't throw out those old baby wipes. Turn them into gorgeous fabric flowers like we did on that vintage tag and grab your canvas and your newspaper and your bubble wrap and create a great sunflower piece of wall art. That's a wrap for today. I want to remind you that you can find our projects on the web at lindapetersondesigns.com and coolthecraft.com. You can also check us out on Facebook and keep up with what we're doing. We would love to hear from you. So until next time, grab all your craft supplies and I'll be back to share more projects to help you keep living a creative life. I'll see you again real soon.